Right, uh, we're moving on now to looking at how we can solve a problem such as finding the angle between two equations of a line. Um, well, between two lines. And in vector form, this may seem a little unusual. Um, because ultimately, I can ask this question, um, this find the angle, or the acute angle specifically in this case, uh, between these two lines. Uh, for any pairs of lines. And that also means that if I'm saying any pair of lines, that means there are going to be ones that don't actually intersect. Okay, so ultimately, when I'm trying to find the angle between two lines, when they don't intersect, what you're imagining is that they do. And that effectively gets and negates the reason of having a position vector. And what you need to imagine is that you're getting rid of the position vector and then bringing both of those vectors so that they go through the origin. And then trying to find that angle. Okay, so that's kind of the key method. And that really means that whatever those position vectors are, we don't need to worry about them. It tells us nothing to do with the angle that is going to be between them. So you're only going to be looking at the direction vectors. Okay. So if you have uh, two vectors and you need to find the angle between them, effectively you can think of this as a triangle. And if you had a triangle and you were doing this, and let's say that this is your uh, L1, so let's call that... Um, let's say that that's the 3, 0, 1, this vector, and this vector was the 2, minus 3, minus 1, okay, and you want that angle theta, then you can think back to triangles that maybe if I knew that length as well, I could do a cosine rule, and Cosine rule is kind of like the birthplace for what we call the scalar product or the dot product. Now, the scalar product looks fairly similar to the cosine rule and is written as a dot b is equal to mod a mod b cos theta. Okay, so it has its origins in the cosine rule so that we have um, a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a, okay? So it does have its origins there, and you can get it, get this formula from that. Okay, that's a bit beyond the scope of this course, but I'd like to, you to know that it is coming from something that you know already. So things that we need to be able to work with here is that, right, what is the a and what is the b? Well, the a and the b are your two direction vectors. Okay, so I'm going to call that one A and that one B. So I'm going to need mod A, I'm going to need mod B, and I'm also going to need to know exactly how this scalar product, this dot product, actually works. Because what does this dot really mean? What is it doing to the two vectors? Well, let's deal with the mod A and mod B bit first. Mod A, if you remember, um, we put the modular signs around a vector to denote we are trying to find the length of it. So that's the 3D Pythagoras part. So if a is 3, 0, 1, then mod a is 3 squared plus 0 squared plus 1 squared square rooted. So that's root 10. And then mod b, done in a similar way, uh, will be 2 squared plus minus 3 squared plus minus 1 squared square rooted. So that's 4 plus 9 is 13, plus 1 is 14, so the square root of 14. So that's got me these bits here. I just need to know what a dot b is. So a dot b, uh, if we write it out, is 3, 0, 1, dotted with 2 minus 3 minus 1. Okay, so this is um, quite straightforward how you do this. 
you just multiply uh, each of the rows together and add them up. So 3 times 2 plus 0 times minus 3 plus 1 times minus 1. So we get 6 plus 0, take away 1, which is 5. Okay, so that's how the scalar product works. Um, this a dot b. Okay. Um, so just as a side note, uh, this is just one of this is one of two different ways that you can multiply vectors together. The other way is known as the vector product or cross product, and that is done um, on this course in FP four. Okay, so in a further maths topic. So we just need to do, deal with the dot product here. So the a dot b is five. Mod a was root ten. Mod b was root fourteen. And we have our cos theta. So if we rearrange that, we get cos theta is five over root ten root fourteen. So we plug this into our calculator. Oh, what calculator? Probably broken it. No, nope, we're all good. Um, right, 5 over square root of 10 times square root of 14. Uh, and then inverse cosine both sides. Um, in this case, let's put it into degrees. So inverse cos of that is 65 degrees. Okay, so 60 degrees to the nearest degree. So this is the process here, okay? Notice how it has found us an acute angle automatically. Um, if this fraction is negative, uh, which it can be if the dot product is negative, what that will do is it when you do inverse cosine, you will get an obtuse angle, okay? And what that'll mean, let's say that our angle was actually 165, that would mean in finding the angle between the two vectors, you've found that one. So you would need to do 180 degrees, take away 165 to get the acute angle that you wanted. But in this example, you've got 65, which is the Acute, is, is an acute angle anyway. Okay? So that introduces you to the scalar product and how it is used.